First, we'll kind of walk through how to set one up, and then we'll go through a couple of the different ways that you can look at a heat map and the different data that it gives you. Um, so first of all, here looking at that same uh, PageSense dashboard, over on the left-hand side, if we open up the heat map section under Analyze, uh, we can go ahead and create a new heat map. Um, so in this case, we're kind of just setting up one as a baseline here. So we'll give it a name. We'll say which page we want it to be on. <clears throat> and then we're going to choose the number of visitors to track. Now, <clears throat> a question might be, you know, why would you not track all visitors? Um, one really important thing when you're building out these different experiments inside of PageSense is that they really are exactly that, an experiment. And so if you're going to compare maybe two versions of a home page and see which one gets better uh, interaction with certain key elements, you want to make sure that your measurement is the same. So you might want to set both of them to 10,000, let them run all the way up to 10,000 and then stop them together rather than just running them on all visitors. Um, now, there are some cases, you know, maybe you just want to set up a very general heat map just to track your homepage from all time. And there you can just go ahead and do all visitors. But there are some cases where you want to be very specific and say, you know, we're running this more as a, you know, finite experiment with a set goal. Uh, so we want to limit the number and kind of cap it out at a certain point so we can say that the experiment is done. Um, kind of moving on forward from there. Kind of jumping back into the real application here that we have some actual data in. Um, so here we're looking at the Zenata PageSense account. I'll go ahead and pull up kind of a general heat map that we have here um, for our homepage. So now that I'm in the heat map section, I can just open up any of these specific experiments here on the right. Um, opening up the heat map, I do want to highlight Every now and then, this page will take a little while to load. So if you're new to using this, one thing I have found that helps is disabling like ad block and things that prevent on-page loading. Or sometimes you'll just get a spinning wheel on this page and the heat map won't show up. Um, but once we actually have a heat map page open, uh, we'll see a couple key areas of this page. Um, so over on the right-hand side, we get kind of some summary statistics. So, you know, how many visitors, how many unique visitors have hit this page? Um, how many visits have they had between all of them? How many of them are engaged? Where engaged is defined as they clicked at least one thing. Um, someone might hit your homepage and then immediately just fall off of it, right? So we wouldn't consider them an engaged user. Um, so a good way just to see kind of your general performance on that particular page. Um, moving over into the little left-hand window here is where we get some of the interesting reporting around interaction. So these heat maps, these little red areas, red and green, are basically looking at um, a visual way to see where everybody has clicked, where, as you would expect, the red coloring or the hotter uh, colors are going to be places that people are clicking more. So looking at our site here, we would see unsurprisingly, right, the call to action buttons like our services and book a meeting are getting the majority of the clicks. Up in the top right, you know, the little expanded window is getting a lot of clicks as well to see the rest of the menu. Um, and then we'll also see things kind of like in the middle there on that making Zoho work for you. On the far left, we're seeing, you know, some measurable amount of clicks on that M. And, you know, in this it's case- It's always kind of interesting. It is. It's always kind of interesting because it's not a clickable item and there's no exactly. indication it is. We see that a lot. But then what you start to think when you see stuff like that on a heat map is, well, like, should that be a link? You know, like if people are going to click it, should we do something with that click? Um, or should we not? Because, you know, it might've just been an accidental click or, you know, something like that. So you get a look at these heat maps and, you know, they're not going to give you any specific action item out of it, but you can kind of derive some. Right, so up in the top left, of course, your logo needs to be a link because people are always going to click that to get back to the top of the homepage. Um, so there's some specific things that you might be able to learn uh, as you're looking at these heat maps. Uh, another little thing here is that you don't have to look at it for the entire duration of that homepage. Um, so in this case, maybe I just want to look at the last 30 days or the last seven days. Um, so I can go ahead and just grab some quick filters to look at a particular time period where I want to pull this heat map. Uh, it will also give you the breakdown up here in the top middle of the page uh, based on device. Um, so here, you know, if we look at this, we'll see a different click distribution. 
You know, so we, we could notice here that on our desktop page, the book a meeting button is red, which is good. That's what we actually want there. But on the mobile page, we're seeing that the book a meeting button is getting a lot less clicks. Um, so the type of insight you can pull there is, okay, maybe smaller phones, that's below the fold, and people aren't seeing that. So maybe we'd want to shorten up some of our content if someone's on a mobile device to make sure that that book a meeting link is, um, you know, within that first page and not needing any scrolls. So you can kind of start to take a look at these and get some of those general insights about, you know, potential ways to improve the site and make sure that people are clicking on the things that you want them to click on. So now there's some additional functionalities here that are kind of rolled into the heat map. I do want to highlight these are not heat maps. Uh, they kind of just group them in under this master reporting, but they're different types of interaction maps that we can make here. Um, so the first one is a scroll map. So here again, red being more engaged. And as we get to cooler and cooler colors, they're going to be less engaged. Uh, the scroll map basically just shows what percentage of views of users see the certain part of the page based on their scroll distance. So up here at the top, we can see 100% of visitors have seen the very top of our site. As you'd expect, that's going to be the first thing that loads. And there's no way to load into this page without going past this part. But as we go down, we'll see things start to kind of roll over and become less seen based on that scroll. Um, it'll also highlight things like the average fold, meaning the average part where you'd have to scroll to start seeing things. Um, so I might look at this and realize, you know what, some of these what we do buttons down here are actually, you know, call to actions and 74% of people, um, you know, might not even make it this far down to be able to see this data. Um, then as you keep scrolling down, as you'd expect, you know, you'll see less and less people get further down on your page. Um, so you might be able to derive some insights here around making sure that anything that's actionable is within that first scroll. Or if it isn't, you know, that's not always the worst thing, but you just have to understand that there's going to be some percent of people that don't scroll down to see some of these services or offerings that you might have on your site. Um, the last little element here within the heat map is the attention map. So you can think about this kind of like a scroll map, but weighted by the amount of time that someone was on a particular part of the site. Um, I have noticed with the attention map, the visits percentage is a little bit wonky because we know that 100% of people saw this, um, but it could just be if people scroll really quickly past it, it might not register this as having received any attention. Um, but I will say that number can be a little bit suspect. But the main thing it's that you're looking little, for, go ahead. I also find it's also tells you, I think a lot of times people come in and then they navigate away. Mm -hmm. They're doing something else because you're showing an average time here of six minutes right? Mm -hmm. Six and a half minutes. So most people I don't imagine are going to spend six and a half minutes staring at the fold. So mm -hmm. a lot of this is, you know, you, you it's better on maybe on other pages, how much time they're on the homepage, though, it can be uh, relatively inconsequential, I think. Yeah, because you're going to have that bounce or, you know, that kind of default page. But then as you'd expect, kind of as you go down, you're going to see less average time spent and a lower uh, view percentage as uh, people move down the page. So again, with this first little setting, some of these ones that we'll go through later have more of a specific goal in mind where you're looking for someone to do an exact thing and kind of defining a success or failure. Um, but with these heat maps, it's more of a way to get a qualitative look over you know, how people are interacting with your page, what they're seeing, what they might not be seeing, so that you can drive some insights around maybe reorganizing things to attract some more attention um, to the particular places that you want to have it.